Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at how to create apps using the trebuchet method. I've had a lot of requests over the past month or so explaining how to use the trebuchet method and why it's important in your app. Now, if you've never heard of the trebuchet method, obviously that begs the question, what is it and why is it useful? The trebuchet method, otherwise known as inline arrays, are basically a way to create relationships between two different sets of data without creating additional rows that will eat into your row quota for your app. Now, that being said, the best way to create a relationship between two different items is to have that item in its own dedicated table. For example, if I have a list of users and a list of things, and you want to express who has which things, the best option is to create a new table called owned things, where you're expressing who owns that thing. And from here, you create a list of records that will create that relationship. So that way you can relate users to the owned things to grab how many things are being owned by that person. Or you can create a relationship between the things and the owned things to see who owns which list of things. However, even though this table is the best methodology because you can create lots of different data points about that relation, it does eat into your row quota. So if you want to keep your app really lean, the alternative is to use the trebuchet method. And the trebuchet method basically takes this list of items that would be here in this owned things, and it condenses it all into a singular cell inside of the things table. Okay, so let's look at a practical example here. In this app, I have a simple list of things and some people. And as a user of this app, I want to mark these things as being owned. Like, yes, I owned Opus. Now, if we use, let's say, something very, very simple, like just toggling a checkbox, yes, you have it, or no, you don't have it. To do that, in the, user, in the list of things, we would have a user-specific column called my thing, which then we could check to see who has it and who doesn't have it, right? So if I'm signed in as Tamsin here, right, I can create some functionality by checking um, a box. In this case, it's a button push that marks the thing as being owned. So if I were to push this button as marked as owned or the Hobrix marked as owned, what I'm doing here is I'm just checking that box. And then I have some conditionality going so that it displays a different button that I own that thing. Okay, this is very, very functional and very lightweight. But the problem with this is it's everything is tied to this user specific column, which means if I'm signed in as somebody else, like Alan, we see that Alan's column has been reset here because it's user specific. So if you're using a user specific column, then you'll never be able to see who owns which things if you're signed in as a different user. You'll only be able to see your own things. And you might not want that for functionality in your app. You might want to see a list of things that are owned by other people. For example, somebody else's playlist or reading list or a list of followers or something like that. So in that regard, you have to go on to the next step, which is creating some sort of relation between the person and their list of things. Now, again, like I mentioned, the best way to do this is through some sort of log. So on this page, I have the exact same setup. I'm still going to mark these things as owned. But the difference here is that instead of checking a box, what I'm doing is I'm writing a new row to that owned things table, where I'm going to capture the user that's clicking the button and the thing that they're clicking. Right. So that action here is adding a row to the owned things table. Okay. So if I were to hit this button, mark as owned, that then marks a new record here in this table, which then changes the status to the fact that it's owned. And so now I can remove and by removing, instead of adding a row, I'm deleting the row. So I'm deleting the row, adding the row. So it has the exact same functionality, except now I have this nice data here that I can use for to see who owns which thing. Once again, the only problem with this is that if you have hundreds and hundreds of users and hundreds and hundreds of items and they're all owning different things, you're going to have thousands and thousands of rows to express that. And so that your app then becomes pretty bloated with this information. So the alternative to creating a log is using the trebuchet method. So the way the trebuchet method works is instead of creating a new row in the owned things table, instead what we're going to do is we're going to write the user's ID 
inside of a new column here called owners. And ultimately what we want is a comma separated list of all of the owners of this item. And so then eventually we can create a relation between the user ID and the owner's column more or less in order to see who owns which thing. Now this does require a little bit of setup. So we're going to walk through that today. And again, the reason why it's called the trebuchet method is because we're taking some values and we're slinging it back into this owners column here. All right, so here's the setup. First, we need a column called owners. And again, this is going to house a comma separated list of all of the users. So for example, user one, user two, user three, something like that. All right, so then what we need to do is we need to express this column as an array of individual items. So to do that, we're going to add a new column here. We can call this something like split owners. What I've been doing more lately is calling this owners array because that's what it is. It's technically an array of items. And we are going to use the split text column and we're going to split the list of owners by the comma. All right, so now we have a list of owners. And now what we need to do is add ourselves to this list of owners if we want to own this item. Okay, so the only way to make that happen is to add ourselves to this array and then override what's currently in the owners column with that new value. So if I'm user four, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually want one comma two comma three comma four. The only way we can do that is by leveraging some array magic. Okay, so we have this existing array of one, two, three. And if we're uh, owner four, then we need to add our user ID to this array. To do that, we're going to use the fantastic make array column. So the type will be make array, and we can call this owners plus me <laughs> array. And now it's asking for what items should constitute this array. Well, we definitely want the existing array, this owners array. And now we want to add ourselves. So I'm going to add another item here and we're going to add to this list of array our ID. So user profile row ID. The reason why I use row IDs and not emails is because then we can keep that data secure away in the user sheet. So I do row ID. And you'll see that then our row ID has been added across all of the rows and it's been added to the list of uh, owners array. Now, ultimately, we want it to look like a comma separated list of values. Again, we want one comma two comma three comma our ID. So to do that, we need to convert it back into a comma separated list. And we do that using the join text column. So I'm going to search for join text or join list. Sorry. And this will be called owners plus me. And I usually call it like CSV for comma separated values. And I'm going to join the texts in the owners plus me array. So again, we're converting the array to a comma separated list of values like so. All right. So now we have the one comma two comma three comma our ID. And so as part of that button push, what we're going to do is take this value, which is already just hanging out in our sheet and use it to override the existing list of users, which means now we are now part of that list of owners. Now we also might want the reverse, right? We want to add ourselves to the array, but we also need to remove ourselves from the array in case we no longer own that thing. So to do that, we need to use the remove element column that can be found underneath the other array folder where we see remove element. And we're going to take the list of owners, our owners array, and we're going to remove our ID. Okay, we'll call this owners minus me array. And lastly, we need to convert that back into a CSV. So we'll just duplicate this, call this CSV instead of array. And again, this will be a join list where we're going to join the owners minus me array and use a comma as a delineator. All right, and so the action then would be to take this value instead of this value and override the owner's column here. Let's go ahead and create that functionality now that our table has been set up appropriately. So in our list of items, I'm going to create an action. 
And we're gonna do some collection item actions. We'll have two actions where we're gonna add. So we'll say mark as owned. If I were building this out, I would use the create new action here. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the set column values here to kind of keep it simple. And we are going to set in this item for this item, right? The list of owners is now going to be the owners plus me CSV. Right. Now we only want this button to appear if we don't already own that item. So we're going to add a condition and we're going to add a condition where the list of owners doesn't include our ID. Because if it doesn't include our ID, that must mean that we don't own it. All right. So the button appears. Great. All right. We're going to do that exact same thing. But we'll call this remove owner status or owned status. Again, set column, this row, and we are going to, again, affect the list of owners by use, by overwriting the, the list of owners, which has our ID in it, to the owners minus me CSV. And again, we only want that to occur if our ID is in the list of owners. So we'll add a condition to where the list of owners does include, it includes our ID. Okay, so by pushing these buttons, for example, Opus, I mark it as owned, right? And we see that now my ID exists in that list of owners, so I must own it. So then all the logic then takes place. Same thing for any of these. And see how quick it is? Right? Unlike the log, if you watch the log, it takes a split second because it has to write to the table and then check against the table. See that? So you actually get even better user interface by using the trebuchet method. And so for all of the items that I own, right, my ID is now in that list of owners. Okay. Now to figure out who owns which things, Right from the users table, we can just create a relation. And we'll create a relation from the row ID of the person to the list of things. And then we have to relate it to the array owners, not the actual list, of, not the comma separated list, but to the array. And we'll match multiple. All right, so now if I were to create a list of users, Right, with inside of Alan's profile, we can create a collection of all the things that he owns. So again, the trebuchet method is a nice lean way of relating one table to another without having to have that go between table of the owned things. However, the one thing you do lose is any other data point besides who owned which thing. For example, if you're trying to track when the thing was owned and how many things the person owns and so forth, right? You won't be able to track that with the trebuchet method because the trebuchet method is only one to one one user ID to one thing ID here. Um, but if that's all you're looking for, like who has completed a task or who owns a thing or who attends that event, the trebuchet method is a perfect solution for what you're trying to do. All right. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can always reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.